Hey everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa Streamworks Workshop. Today I've got this Gibson L00. That's what I'm going with. Uh, I would guess that this is from the 30s or 40s. It looks about the same as the ones that came out about that time, except for one little difference. Uh, this one has been refinished, at least I'm pretty sure it has, because originally they came with a big burst. It was dark around the edges and kind of an orange in the center. And that is on the agenda for this guitar. Uh, along with that, there's some loose internals, a pretty bad belly bulge. We're going to go ahead and open this up. This one is a lot like the Carson Robison that we did that was from the 30s or 40s too. And Gibson actually made those as well, but they made them from Montgomery Ward. Um, you can see it says Gibson on there. It's actually been stripped of the black paint. From the outside, it looks just like the other guitar, you know. Um, and it basically with the burst looks just like them, but the difference is on the inside this one is X braced whereas the other one was ladder braced so it's a little different, but I think the first thing we're going to work on is getting this back off So there was one loose spot on the back where it already had a crack. So I started from there and I'm just working my way around relatively carefully and popping the back loose um, to some degree. I have a little bit more leeway on this one because I know we're refinishing it. I still don't want to go busting it really bad but it does free me up to maybe pick up a little bit more speed. His back is relatively thin. It's kind of hard to grab the seam. It's actually not too bad. So. I'll keep working at this and I'll bring you back here in a little bit once I've made some uh, reasonable progress. Well, I got it off and I knew it was filthy and it sure lives up to it. It's real dusty. I'll have to get the vacuum out and clean it out. It came off pretty clean. I'm pretty happy with how it came off of there. It's getting a little late in the day. I think I'm going to call it quits for the day and we'll come back to this first thing tomorrow. So you can see here I went ahead and vacuumed this out and that already made a vast improvement on the looks of this. I've got the bridge removal tool, the heater here, sitting on the bridge plate. I'm going to take it out of there. As this morning I was kind of knocking some of these globs of glue off, I noticed there's actually a reasonable gap underneath the bridge plate up in this front corner and I'm kind of hoping that it's actually a big gap under there and that's part of the reason that it has bellied so bad because on top of that this bridge plate is tiny there's very little to it so I'm letting it get warm and then I will try to take it off of there Since I've got the bridge plate off of there, I've been testing to see how flat this is. And I went ahead and put this board on here just to see if I could get it a little flatter because I, you know, I'm really noticing that dished out area. And it does flatten it out once I clamp that board on there. But I also noticed, once I clamp this board on here, this crack that's over about here closes up really tight. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue that up. Since I've got this board clamped on here, I'll just have to loosen this clamp, slide some uh, parchment paper in there so that I don't, you know, glue this board to the top and get some glue on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because that closes up really tight to the point which I can't even find it while it's clamped up. So I'll get some glue on there and we'll close that up. 
not to rain on your parade there, but if you, um, by, just by the way that sounds to me, uh, if it closes up when you press that flat, then it's under high stress. So be sure to cleat the inside yep, of that. Yep, I've already got a cleat made. I was going to yeah, okay. do it while it's... And like I was just going to say, if you can't see it, you might, might want to mark it ahead of time with a pencil or something. You know, like put a pencil mark across where you can put the cleat or something. So I think that'll close that up, but you might have heard Jerry say that that's going to be under some stress because you can you can tell because it closes up so tight once I get it clamped. But I do already have a cleat made. It's going to go right about here, and it's oversized at the moment, but I'll carve it down once it's already stuck to the top. And the grain on this cleat is running perpendicular to the grain on the top, which means it won't split as easy should that crack try to open again. While the top crack is drying, I'm going to glue this crack on the back. This one here, it's been here a while. It's kind of got a partner over here, but I think somebody's already closed that one up. So we'll get this one real quick. I tried stopping it up you But every little thing I do Makes me wish and dream of you I'm blue all over again I'm blue for you, darling I can't try to pretend I'm not Cause I'm blue all over again So I've started carving the cleat Which you can't see because it's right here Started carving it down so it's a little bit uh, more shapely, closer to the shape I want it in. Anyways, I'm gonna start working on the bridge plate. I've got the old one here. You know, the biggest problem with this is I don't think it was big enough, and I think it's allowed that bulge to get pulled on the top. So I'm gonna make a slightly larger one, and I mean surface area, mostly. I've got a piece of Paduke. Very good tone wood. This was used for probably the back of another guitar. It's a hair thicker than this. This is sitting at about uh, a little less than a hundred thousandths, and this is a little closer to a hundred thousandths, if not just a hair more. It's really negligible, but I'm going to cut a new plate out of here that extends up a little more and extends down a little more. It'll be just a little bit longer in the back, and that'll give some more support to this area. And should keep the top a little more flat. The grain direction is obviously running the same, which will be perpendicular to that of the top. If you see these lines here, that isn't actually the grain on the bridge plate. That's the grain from the top. The grain's running this way. So I'm going to mark these lines here. And I'm going to take a straight edge, and I'm going to extend those lines. I'm going to do some little finesse here and get this little marked up. You know, I'm not quite sure I'm happy with where this is all shaping out to be. So I'll do a little bit of playing with this and get this shaped up right, and then we'll go cut it out. So I've got some lines drawn on there. I don't know how wet there you can see them. And you can see them there, here, here, and here. Those are the ones I'm going to cut. This is still way too long in the back, but I'm going to worry about that after I get the rest of it cut out. I just want to see what it's going to look like. I think that looks way better. I think that actually looks normal. I don't think that looks too oversized. I did go ahead and take a little bit off the back uh, from when you saw it last, and I think it's fitting in there just fine. Um, I'm going to round these corners off a little bit, and then we're not too far off of gluing this on there. Alright, so I just wiped the back of this down with some acetone to take out some of the oils. 
and it came off pretty dirty, so I'm glad that I did that. That should help this stick a little better. I think we're ready to glue it up. Um, I've got some calls sitting here ready. I've got some clamps sitting around ready to go. Make sure I'm glue on the right side. Every time you're not It's fairly late in the day. This will sit till tomorrow morning and we should be good to move on. Um, I'm not real sure where I'm going to move on to, but uh, move on from this at least. So I've got this little Gibson over here in the go bar and the reason for that is these two kind of fan braces here are loose on this end. You might be able to see I can actually wiggle this one. I don't know if you can see it. Anyways, I'm going to try to get some glue under there. So those are clamped down now. I'll let those sit for a little while and then we're just about done on the inside of this. So I am all done on the inside of this little Gibson guitar here. Uh, you know, we got this new bridge plate in. I also put another cleat in to match this one here. And, you know, I just wanted to make sure this crack was going to be nice and solid. It really was pretty bad, so I put another one in there just to be safe. Those are both carved down pretty well sized. Anyways, I think I'm going to glue the back on. Now I'm just going to glue it up to about here because I want this to be a little adjustable because the neck angle is not great on this and I'd like to add a little bit more and I can get away with that if I glue it up to here-ish. It'll make more sense as I go along. quite a few hours clamped up and I thought I'd show this to you though neck angle on this was not great when we started it just barely clears the bridge and actually it may have loosened up a little bit since I've had the back off it actually ran into the bridge just a hair and what I'd like to see is a little clearance from the straight edge on the bridge so what I can do is, since the back is loose, is I can bend the neck in just a little bit, give me a little more clearance there at the bridge, and then I can glue the back to the neck block again all around, and it will hold it right at that new spot. And that way I don't have to work too hard on getting the neck angle right again. And because this isn't bound, I don't have to worry too much about it. And also it's getting refinished, so it'll blend in perfectly. So, now I'm going to work out how, about how much of that I want. You know, I don't want to bend it too far in, then we're going to have a mile high saddle. So, I'm going to work out a little bit way to do that. And I will bring you back once I've decided on how it is exactly I'm going to do that. So, I think I've used this before, but if you haven't seen it, this is a piece of oak that I've got running along here and it's real stiff and I made sure that on the bottom it was really flat and you know it shouldn't bend uh, in this orientation I've got it clamped to the fretboard basically working as a straight edge on the fretboard I've got leather underneath those clamps just so you know and then on the bridge end I've got a shim underneath there that's about an eighth of an inch it's a little less than that but it's pretty close and that way I'm shimming what was the straight edge up about an eighth of an inch at the bridge 
and then this all holds the neck right where it should be and I can feel on the back and I know that the back should overhang now and I can tell that it does and that's what I want when I glue the back on right where it is it should hold the neck right at this angle anyways that's what I'm uh, that's the idea here you know if I needed more angle than this I could obviously shim this up more if you needed less than this you could put less of a shim in there um, but I think right where it's at is going to be good so what I think I'm going to do is trim this edge just a little bit to get this neck fitting in there and then we will glue it up so I'm taking uh, this little scalpel blade and just just cutting the end off of the back until it drops all the way down so that seals up pretty good and that gave me that extra neck angle I needed so we're ready to glue the rest of this back on here. I will get set up to do that. So I am putting some glue in here now. This is a little harder to do than it would have been to, you know, put glue on the whole thing. Glue it all up at once. But this gives you that control over the neck angle. And it's not all that much more difficult to do. Especially once you get a paintbrush out and paint it around in there. that'll be good. We'll let that sit for quite a few more hours, get totally set up, and then I think we're ready to start getting the rest of the finish off of here. I have started taking the finish off of this guitar. I'm mostly just using this scraper. The goal here is to take the finish off but don't take any wood off, and the scraper gives you some good control. It also lets you get all the way up to any obstacles, like the bridge. And I can just pull away from it. So I've got a lot of this to do because there's a lot of surface area on this guitar. This is not the most exciting of videos, so I'm not going to film a whole, whole lot of it. Got a lot more to go. I'll bring you back when I make some progress. I've been sanding on this for a while now, and I'm just about done with the removal part of this finish. All that's pretty much left is around the body, on the top of the body. Um, because this is going to take quite a few coats, I'm going to put a really light coat of black on the headstock now. haven't really talked about what we're going to do on this headstock uh, to get it back the way it was but as you can tell already I am painting it black like it was originally like all Gibson headstocks are nowadays and then I've got a stencil made to do the white Gibson logo I'm going to let this get set up black and we'll go back to work on the rest of this. I've kind of had all the sanding I can have for today. So I'll let this dry a while. But I'll show you. I've got a couple of stencils made. You can kind of see this one here. It's still got the piece in it. But anyways, that'll get pushed out. And it's got double stick tape on the back, which is also cut. So once this is totally black, I'll stick this on, paint in the white, and peel this off then it'll be the perfect Gibson logo that's how we're going to accomplish this section I'm going to set this aside to dry now work on something else so I'll skip ahead a little bit here um, I made the top orange you can see it's taped off around the brim so I don't get any of the color on the sides and those are still going to be dark brown 
Um, <laughs> I basically forgot to film this part of it, but anyway, I've got some light brown in the airbrush, and I'm gonna start this shape. It's kind of a kind of a teardrop shape. Really, what it is is it's shaped like a guitar pick, if you ask me. And I'm gonna roll it. Basically, come down off of this purfling and back up and around. And I'm going to take the dark brown and start the shape, or actually the light brown and start the shape. And we'll see how it comes out. I think it's going to be alright. I think it's going to look like it's supposed to. You know, it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to look like a 80 year old instrument. And I think that's where we're going to get with this. So, I'm going to go spray some light brown and we'll see how it turns out. So it doesn't look really good right now. I sprayed the outline of the burst and it's light brown, but it really just went on red. Um, all of this area and all of this area and a lot of the edges are going to be black. And once they're black, I think it's going to look a lot better because this doesn't really look right. But once I do the black, I think it'll look really good. Um, I'm going to let this totally dry. Since there's some finish in there, I think it's just going to be best to just let it dry. Uh, by the way, the finish that I'm using is the True Oil. I think it gives it a nice amber color and it's a good finish. So we'll let this dry a couple of hours. It shouldn't take too long. There's not a whole lot of finish going through the airbrush. But we'll let it dry and then we'll come back with the black, I think, and then it should look pretty good. So that's what the burst looks like so far. I've had a couple of coats of black. Just trying to make everything nice and blended. But as it is raining currently, I'm not going to get to work on that anymore. But what I can work on is this headstock here. I have been sanding it with some 400, trying to get it nice and smooth, and it's coming along. I'm going to try to get the logo on it today, and that will be for the exclusive purpose of so Jerry doesn't have to, because today is the last day I will be working on this, because it is the last day I'll be working in the shop. So I've got quite a few coats of black paint on there actually. Um, it shouldn't be too much more and I should have this pretty smooth. And as soon as we're done with that, I will get the white paint out and we will work on getting the logo nice and centered and where we want it to be. It'll go on something like that. We'll paint this in white, peel that off, and we'll have that perfect white Gibson on there. So I've got the sticky backing peeled off here and you can see I made a hinge with this piece of tape so it would drop right where I wanted it to. All right, it's stuck on there. Now we'll get the white paint and fill that in. So I've tested this a bunch already on some test pieces of wood and I think I found the best plan of action here is to put a light coat down with the tiniest little paintbrush Try not to hit the edges and then come back with a slightly heavier coat. You can set a watch by their routine. Classic small town Norman Rockwell scene. They talk about the where's and wins. A little gossip now and then about who's doing what, maybe why. I am peeling this off now. I've got enough coats on here. I thought I'd show you while I did it. I'm pretty happy with that actually. I'm not sure it would have gone much better. Well my friends, it's time to quit procrastinating. And I really haven't been procrastinating. I just got too much on my plate. But it's time to get going on these instruments that Caleb didn't finish when he left. This is one of them, and it's in kind of sad shape right at the moment. I was hoping he would have got this done, but uh, that didn't happen. I actually think the top looks all right. It looks pretty similar to a vintage one of these if you look at them. Now, with all the tape and the crud on here, it's really hard to tell. You have to be able to see through that and know what it's going to look like later. And I can kind of see through that and sort of know what it's going to look like. I do see a few things I'm not real crazy about or real happy about. One of them is the sanding job. It wasn't sanded as well maybe as it could have been after he scraped it off. 
I'm also a little concerned about this um, dull black versus the shinier black. I'm not sure what that's about. And same way over here, it's a little weird, although this is taped off now. But anyway, um, the first thing I'm going to do is start right here on this ring and clean this up. So here we go. And I've just got myself my little scraper here, dental tool scraper that I made. And I think this would be the perfect thing for this job. And I've got to get the light just right for me so I can see it without a glare. And then I got to scrape this clean. The way you scrape this is very light scraping. You don't get down hard on it. Um, you scrape lightly. Just and you just keep scraping until you break through and you know you, you just don't put a lot of pressure on your scraper if you do that you're going to scratch your plastic really deep and that's not going to be good you want to just be scraping the finish and not the plastic too much so you do have to scrape the plastic some to get the to get the white to show you know but it should be very minimal. And in a place or two, like right here against the pick guard, I may have to get a different scraper or make a different scraper or something. This plastic seems to be slightly deformed. And the tape job seems to be a little bit over the plastic too. So to get rid of some of this extra tape here so I can scrape it cleaner. It's a very tedious little job. You mean to tell me you don't know about what's her name and so and so? Can you believe that old coot's still alive? Their own little corner of the world. Opal, Ruby, and Pearl. Well, it's starting to look better. It's a long ways from finished, but we're getting there. A lot about scraping is uh, getting a very comfortable grip, a solid grip so that you don't move and hit the wrong thing. Well, this is probably like watching paint dry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'll show you what my next step is. Well, I've got that ring cleaned up. Now I'm going to do more or less the same thing to this side binding. And, well, I don't even know if I'm gonna do that yet. I mean, cause I may stain this because this isn't matching, of course. He didn't finish staining this for some reason, which doesn't make much sense to me. But I'm going to have to stain the rest of this dark. So I probably won't clean up this binding until I get that done. But I'm going to have to get this tape off of here anyway. No point in you watching me peel off tape. But that's my next step. There were several cracks on the back of this guitar that um, I think were already fixed from the inside. But from the outside they weren't. Uh, solid sealed so I've been off camera filling them with CA glue now I'm sc scraping that CA glue back off down to the wood I've just about come to the belief that the CA glue is the only thing that fills cracks you can put all kinds of fillers finishes things in those cracks and they just keep repelling and repelling and repelling and repelling you're better off just filling them with CA glue and then going from there. And even that's not easy. I had to put three or four applications of that on here. But the difference is that that goes fast because it dries fast. I think I got it. I think that was a pretty big crack right there actually. Um, doesn't look great now, but it was a big crack, open crack. And uh, even though it was stable, I couldn't move it. It looks like there's another crack right here I see too. Yeah, we'll have to fill this one because the finish finds its way down in those cracks and it just separates and just leaves them. It makes it look like the Grand Canyon. So you really got to fill, fill them before you put your finishes on. And of course, we're a ways from doing that anyway, but, but I want to get the cracks filled before I get ready to finish this. 
This one here probably needs another application. This section here, it's probably can't see that crack on camera, but there is a crack right here too, a very fine crack. I'm gonna go down through there and fill that crack with this. And again, it's probably been repaired from the inside. I'm just assuming Caleb did that already, and I truly don't know. There's paper over the sound hole, otherwise I'd look in there, but, and I can pull it out. I, I can always fix these from the inside later if they're not fixed from the inside, if, if they need something extra. But as far as I can tell, they are fixed because they're not moving. All right, so there's my first little application. I wipe it pretty much off, and then I put it on again. The CA glue sticks to itself better than it sticks to anything else. I've always said that. The second application then, I try to put it on a little heavier. Now I'm going to spritz it with this accelerator from way off in the distance. And, um, you know, I let it sit like this for 10 or 12 seconds. That way it won't turn white. That's dry. I'm going to put another one on there because I can still see the crack. This one will dry much faster since it's got the accelerator on it already. Which is also what I'm counting on to fill the void. That's about the only way you can get those holes filled is to do it just like I just did it there. You put it on, wipe it off, put it on, accelerate it. Put it on again and the accelerator from the first time will cause it to set up much faster and fill the void. You could probably do it in two steps. One step with the accelerator, second step like this, but this seems to work pretty well and remove, you know, and fill the gap, the crack really well. And then I just Scrape it down flush to the wood for the most part. You gotta be careful on your scraping. Again, I've been doing the scraping thing my entire career, so I've got this down pretty good. You might have a little more trouble with this until you get your technique down. My finger is riding on the top to hold the, the, the scraper at the perfect level. find the round bladed exacto knife, the small one, the perfect thing for scraping things like this. I think these are a number 22 if I remember right. Nope, these are a number 10 it says on this one. All right, I don't see any crack there anymore. This one still looks like a slight crack, so I'm going to do it yet again. Again, I'm going to spritz it from a distance. It's like, even this is repelling from that crack. It's not going in the crack very good in places. So maybe I'll try wiggling it around here and getting it down in there with this toothpick a little bit more. It's starting to set up, it looks like. It's very light misting like that. that's all it takes. I'm gonna scrape this one again and see if it's filled in this time better but I don't think it's finished yet. I can still see the least little bit of an indention there. Yeah it just repels. Everything repels from cracks. I don't get that. I assume it's some kind of wax or something that's in these cracks. I just don't know why that happens but it happens all the time. Even the CA glue is repelling from this crack a little bit. So we're making progress each with each application. I can tell you one thing I know for absolute certainty, and that is, if you're having trouble filling the crack with CA glue, I guarantee you, you would never get it filled with the crappy fillers and, and you know finishes and things. They just won't do it. Now, you can fill it with, you know, wood putty or something like that but those things always show up this if you do the CA glue thing and fill it with this uh, typically you won't see this after you're stained and sanded and finished and everything you just won't see it I think I'll sand it now 
And if I can see these after I sand them, I'll apply some more, but I think they're gonna be gone. This one here was really bad over here. This was a big, deep crack. I applied several coats to this one, and it's looking pretty good now. I'm trying to get it leveled out, because it's unlevel. We'll go to the sanding and see how that works. You know, it looks like Caleb probably sanded this with a with orbital sander, and I can see a lot of marks in it. So, probably gonna just do this. Well, there's gonna be a lot of sanding here for the next uh, hour or so, so I'm not gonna sh show all that, but I'll show you what it looks like when I get her sanded down. It's gonna look pretty good, I think. Uh, I don't see any more cracks now, and those cracks look like they've completely disappeared to me. So we'll see how it goes as I sand further along. I think the back is sanded well enough now, and I do not see any cracks now. It looks pretty good to me. I, you know, it's going to look better once it's all one color, but uh, I'm going to do the sanding on the sides and get that all caught up too, because the sides still need quite a bit of work, I think. It looks pretty good overall. There's quite a few dents in it, and I may wet those down and see if they'll, the grain will raise where I can sand those smooth. I'm not gonna show all of this, but I'll show you what it looks like when I get her finished. Don't know if you'll be able to see this real well because they're up in these high spots, but I'm taking a paintbrush, and uh, I'm just dampening these uh, dents. There's several dents, and I'm dampening them down I've got this little heating iron here. Uh, someone, one of my viewers sent this to me, uh, I think with the thought of removing fretboards and things like that. In my opinion, this doesn't get hot enough for that. It gets close, but it doesn't quite get hot enough. So this, but it does get hot enough to do things like this and raise the grain. And it's really not steaming yet, so it needs to be a little bit hotter but it's getting close. You can see it dried that one up fairly well. There, it's starting to steam. When it steams like that, it, it, it will raise the grain a little bit. And sometimes what you need to do is take a uh, actual wet cloth, lay it over that, I'll wet these areas down, and then I'll actually weigh, lay the wet material right over the top of that, like that, and then just iron it dry. You can see that's steaming up pretty good now. And that will raise the grain in that area there pretty well, I believe. Try to get right directly over that one bad spot. This is the deepest dent right here. And I don't know if it's gonna get it out, but it won't hurt to try. Heated and everything, I'll see if we can sand it out. See, I don't know if you can see it there, there's a dark spot right there by my finger. Um, anyway, that is a deep dent. I think this is gonna bring it up enough to sand, you know, 80%, 90% of it out anyway. It may not get it all, but I think it helped it. Yeah, it helped it some. It's, I can still see it, but I don't feel it as much as I did. This one's fairly deep right there. Let's see if we can try it again. This spot right here at the tip, I'll just dampen it down and try the heating iron on it yet again. It usually raises the grain a little bit. Try that one spot again. See if it raised it up enough that time. And now I'll dry the wood off before I try sanding it again. That one went completely away here, but this one's still just showing slightly. It's definitely improved. Try it one more time. I think it's completely gone, but I think it's passable now. Yeah, I don't think you'll see that once we're through the finish or anything now. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead. The rest of it doesn't look that bad. That was the biggest dent I saw on that side. Although there's a couple of pretty good sized ones here and here. 
this is a pretty deep one right here and it's got finish down in it uh, that doesn't help let's see if it'll raise it I doubt it will because um, that finish down in that hole isn't going to help it uh, get moisture down in there yeah it didn't didn't seem like it came up much you know that that's a really deep hole right there I don't know if you can see it but when you got finish over them the, the water can't soak into the fibers I don't know maybe making it worse but I'm gonna try scraping the finish out of that hole you know I'm gonna try not to get any wood I'm just trying to just get the finish so far it looks pretty good it doesn't look quite as deep as it did after I start scraping it like this I think I got almost all the finish off of it you probably can't even hardly see it now but there it is right at the end of that that's it right there I think I got it without taking out any wood so let me soak it down one more time you know, if you get that wood really saturated and then you steam it there's a good chance it'll come up so let's Try that. I think it helped. I can tell it helped. It has to almost have no finish on it in my opinion. I've seen guys do it through finishes and stuff and I've never had luck with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, you can see a lot of stuff on camera. <laughs> You know what I mean? They, people show things on camera that I'm not so sure are 100% truthful. Once, once you get the finish off of it though, that, that improved it, I would say 50% at least. Maybe a little more than that. It's still not perfect. But boy, it came up a lot. So what I say you do with that now is you do it again. You really soak it, you know? You just soak and soak and soak it get the wood soaked almost all the way through and then you've got a better chance see if we can be a little more specific and just get the water right on the dent and nowhere else this time just keep touching it as I watch it soak in there a little bit doesn't seem to be soaking in much now. Rub it around with the dry end of this. See if I can get it to soak in a little bit more. Yeah, that helped a little bit more. That definitely helped. So, I guess what I'm saying is if you can get the, concentrate the, the water just on the dent, you got a better chance then soak in the whole area. Just gonna put that much water on it. Let that soak in for a second. Got one of these little jobbers now and maybe I'll rub it around right there. Doesn't seem to be soaking in though. I wish it would soak in, that would help. Well, I can tell you for a fact that's much improved. Um, this spot here, where it's right at the end of that stick, was way deeper than this and you can still see these and these are there and you can feel those pretty deep this one you can feel it I ain't gonna lie to you you can still feel it but it's much improved much 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 improved I may try it a couple more times and I'm gonna do some sanding and cleaning up here I'll show you what it looks like before I put the stain to her 